Am I live? Yes, I am live. I'm still... <laughs> this is my third time to do a live session and I'm still, I'm still trying to figure things out. Um, hi! Welcome to another Q&A Friday where I answer all your questions based only on my very... Um, uh, based on my experience, my personal, very personal experience, and not just fucking textbook knowledge, because I hate textbook knowledge. <laughs> I'm not just gonna pass on some knowledge to all of you, my students, just because I read it somewhere. If I have not experienced it, well, maybe I'll say something, but um, that I've read from a book or newspaper or whatever, or on the internet, but I always, always, try to answer things based on my personal experience and if it works for me then i'll have to share it to you if it doesn't work then i'm also going to share it with you uh it's a little gloomy outside here in manila and i i love the weather it's a little too cold for me especially my my kids my my fur kids are still they still want me to turn on the ac and it's pretty it's pretty cold it's been very hot in the past few weeks that I have not been walking them uh, a lot during the day. I have to wake up really early in the morning and walk them. And I also have to walk them very late at night. But I prefer it early in the morning, like 3 a.m. And I'm not exaggerating because at night, the cement is still fucking hot. And I don't want them to go through, you know, a Walking should be a very uh, pleasurable experience for them, and I'm not gonna make them suffer from walking. I mean, I make them pee during the day, of course, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not making them stay outdoors for a very long time. And before I start, I want to say hi, hi Tessa, hi, hi Murphy. Hi, Ate Sharon. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yes, so today is um, Q&A Friday and this is my third episode and thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to talk about food. Every question that you threw at me are very good questions and I'm going to try to answer them all. And today I'm going to talk about raw food. I'm also going to talk about natural food. Raw for me is under the category of natural food. Under natural food, there will be two or three ways of preparing uh, natural food. There will be raw, dried, um, dehydrated, and of course your cooked food, and why I think all three of those are very uh, healthy for your dogs, and why I, all, I, I use them uh, as well. I'm a big fan of raw, I'm gonna tell you that. I'm a big fan of raw, I feed them raw, and I still use kibble, and I'm gonna talk about kibble later, what kibble I use, and why I still use kibble. And um, treats, food treats. And food treats are also very important because it's something that you use to teach them to understand you and communicate back and forth. And it should be just as healthy as you know, and as yummy, <laughs> it should be very rewarding, and it should be as yummy as possible, especially when you're uh, teaching your 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 dogs uh, difficult things for them to learn. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about allergies a little, and if you can, what else? Um, I'm gonna talk about how my dogs are allergic to certain things, especially when it comes to food. Uh, they're allergic to poultry. They're allergic to, very specifically, the poultry that you usually get in a, in a supermarket. If it's not free, I'm going to talk about uh, those later on. Co so let's start with what I give my dogs. Because one of the most common things that I am, common questions that I encounter is that, Brad, what do you give your dogs? Okay, let me just take a sip then. Coffee is just so good, especially in this kind of weather. Brad, what do you give your dogs? They're old and they're healthy. Um, I give both 
kibble, which is the dry food, otherwise known as pellets, but I call them kibble. Um, because I travel with them, I compete with them, and I always have to rotate their food anyway. So let me, let me try to expand that. One, nothing beats raw, okay? I think as predators, they're supposed to eat raw because that's what they're built for. And they thrive. They're not just, you know, being fed. They're not just surviving, they're thriving. And at the same time, they're getting all this nutrition from um, the, the raw animal that they eat. And I started giving Alabro when he was three months of age. And I, I remember I was giving chicken, uh, raw chicken with the skin, with the bone, everything. But I had to, I had to use, um, I had to pound it a little just to make the bones a little bit uh, smaller. And what else? I would give him a huge ass uh, beef bone for him to chew on. And I have been doing that until late last year. Maybe November. And I'll tell you why as well. Um, it's It's healthy uh, because they get the most out of again an, a raw diet because that's when everything is fresh you cannot get any fresher than raw and I think it also is applicable to us humans I mean Japanese eat raw food I like my veggies raw in fact I don't I like munching on veggies that are I that came out of my ref. So be when I buy them from the market, I wash them. I use soap. I use soap to wash them, and then I put them all inside the um, the ref. And then every time I'm kind of hungry, I just take out a carrot and then start munching the carrot. And this is not something that I force myself to do. This is something that I really like doing. I munch on raw carrot. I like salad. Um, Sometimes I put dressing, most of the time I don't. Oh, here's another thing. I love tomatoes. I love raw tomatoes. And that's what I use um, to, to just... Whenever I'm watching TV, or very rarely when I watch TV, when, when, when I listen to an audiobook, that's what I try to eat because it's just so much fun. Uh, of course, fruits as well. Do I give my dogs fruits? We will get to that later on. Let me just see one. Okay, I give raw food and I think it goes under the category of natural food. Most people say that, oh, aren't they going to get salmonella and all that crap? <laughs> no, because, not, not that I'm going to explain all the science behind it, because after 11 years, my dogs are still alive and they have not been sick because of raw. I will tell you my recipe later and it may not be the best recipe but because I have been doing it for 11 and a half, 11 years then I think there's something good about it that you need to try it out. <laughs> okay, so no, they, that's the second question, no, they, at least with my dogs, they have not been sick because of it. There are some dogs that might go through what's called, especially when they're a little bit older, they might go through a detox phase where they shed a lot of they shed a lot of hair. They start to itch. And this is because you have transitioned a little bit later in their life. And that normally happens when you started a little bit late. It's never too late to start giving them raw or natural food, cooked. Uh, I, I really think that uh, the price of transitioning in terms of financial and in terms of time is nothing compared to the good health, 
that you are gifting your dog long term. So yeah, I give raw, I give cooked. Why am I giving cooked? One person asked, what, why are you still giving cooked food? Oh, okay. So if I go on trips and I have the luxury of having a fridge with me inside the room or inside the hotel, then I will have to cook some of the, the raw prepared beef, the raw concoction that I make. So when I travel with the frozen cooked food, then it's not going to spoil until we get to the hotel where I can keep all those um, raw food, uh, I mean uh, natural cooked food that I have prepared prior to the trip. It's convenient, a little bit more convenient than bringing raw because I don't have big uh, Coleman's to put frozen raw uh, beef or pork. So the best thing that I could do is to uh, heat them up uh, or cook them so it doesn't spoil easily even if they're not in a even if they're not in a huge or very cool Coleman or a very cold environment for them to spoil. Uh, there's a lot of people, even my friends, even my students that are not comfortable touching raw meat. I can't blame them. And there's nothing wrong with giving cooked food. What makes it a little bit uncomfortable for me is that when people start adding ingredients that may not be very safe for dogs, especially if they try to suit their taste, that's when the cooked food becomes table food. Now, Brad, third question. My vet, <laughs> my vet told me not to give human food to my dogs and just give kibble or the dry dog food or the canned dog food that he has recommended us. Ask yourself first what the meaning of human food is. If you're giving kare-kare, caldereta, sinigang, that has so many ingredients that are not natural for the dogs to eat, then that is a questionable concoction. I will agree not to give those human dish to your dogs because it has so many ingredients that may not be, especially when we cook, us, us Filipinos, when we cook sinigang, we're not quite doing it naturally anymore. We buy we buy the powdered sinigang mix. We buy so many other things that your dogs will not be able to eat naturally on their own. I mean, they can kill a chicken. Everything about the chicken is safe. Unless, of course, they're allergic to chicken. Um, but they're not... They're never bred naturally to eat powdered human uh, ingredients like again those sinigang mix that are full of sodium and that's when it becomes unhealthy for them okay table scraps is what I call them table scraps are of course the scraps the leftovers that you weren't able to eat and then you start giving them to your dog and there is a long-term effect although most of the table scraps or um, table food are made out of very natural uh, ingredients such as meat there are a lot of seasoning again that are not safe for them you're probably over seasoning it for your taste, especially us Asians. We love, love well seasoned dishes. Uh, what else? Uh, pepper. 
a lot of chili. I mean, they, it may not be that very um, healthy for them if you're giving them table scraps. However, from my experience, my very limited experience growing up with a lot of rescue dogs, they survived for many years eating only table scraps back in the 80s and 90s. Wow. We're not gonna buy the... It, I remember my dad cooking for them. He will season it the way we want it. And then, of course, the dogs... We, we're gonna share it with the dogs. And they live for a very long time surviving only with... And very healthy um, with table food. They loved it. <laughs> They even ate rice. And now, I mean, there's a lot of companies which I agree on and vets that say do not give your dogs uh, grains and rice and all that. But again, my experience is only limited to rescue dogs or street dogs back then. I never had, I mean, they were built to last. They were built for hard labor. <laughs> they were built to... To survive so um, I don't know if it had any effect as far as I remember as far as I can remember they were very healthy and they lived to up to like 13 15 years and they survived with only on table food because we never had to be honest we never had the idea of giving dog food before because for my dad dog food is cheap uh, now I disagree because some dogs are really surviving and thriving, thriving uh, on dog food, the dry kibble alone. And times have changed. <clears throat> I myself give dry food on a regular basis. So let's get to that part. Why am I still giving uh, kibble if I believe so much in natural food? One emergency situations we are in the middle of this pandemic going on in the whole world and it would be nice to have something that you can keep and stock up on uh, in your house for a really long period of time because we both know we all know that kibble lasts the shelf life of kibble lasts for a very long time and before this all started, uh, the, the pandemic, before COVID-19 started taking over our country, I stock up on a whole lot of dog food. And, I mean, it's still there. <laughs> it's still there. Uh, I'm not using it yet because right before we got affected and right before this lockdown, it was time for my dogs to transition again to raw or natural food and I'm very lucky that I have meat shops that are still open nearby and I am reserving the dry dog food for when I am desperate to give them food and there are no other options but to give them food outside out of a bag so I'm reserving that and now they're still eating raw and again I'm very lucky that there are a lot of there are two out of three four meat shops around my area that are still open even on a Sunday and I get I buy my raw uh, beef from them and the internal organs as well and I'll tell you my recipe later on so that's the reason why I'm still giving dog food now all three of my dogs are not compatible to all dog food it causes them allergic reactions especially they're very sensitive to yeast overgrowth now this is this is my passion because food is medicine and medicine is food and i follow that i don't overeat I don't eat, eat a lot of unnatural things unless it's a Sunday. So that Sunday is my binge day. Uh, I practice what I preach not only to my dogs but also to myself. 
I I give just enough for my dogs and I give the healthiest and I don't believe in overfeeding dogs and I'll tell you my ratio later and how much I give my dogs during the day and there's nothing scientific to it and you have to be very observant of your dog in more ways than one in more reasons than one uh, so let me get to that later on let me just take a seat. again i still give kibble but i don't give kibble for a long period of time i rotate it every three months i give kibble and then i give natural food and by natural food i mean either raw or home cooked and then next three months kibble again no problem for some of you who have time and cannot transition fully to natural food, then it would be great to prepare just a tub, like a gallon, um, an ice cream tub, to prepare natural food and just use that small amount as a topper on their uh, kibble could be raw a lot of a lot of people say don't mix raw food or natural food and um, dog food together because it has a different rate of digestion I agree but if we go back to my personal experience it has never affected my dog so we call it a topper and that adds a lot of nutrition to your dry dog food Okay. Uh, and that's for people who cannot fully transition to raw food and at the same time or raw or natural or natural food and at the same same time still want to up the nutritional value that they give their dogs on an everyday basis and I don't look down to kibble again I still use kibble I don't look down to people who just use kibble, but if you want to give something that would naturally strengthen them and give them uh, a higher nutritional value, then use a topper. And the recipe that I'm going to share later is something that you can cook or give raw uh, as a meal or as a topper. Okay, so. Um, I've answered the question what I give, why I still give dog food, the, the store-bought dog food, um, and I rotate. Okay, Brad, why do you still rotate the food? Again, for situations like this one, I want my dogs to have, I want my dog's body, their system, to still be comfortable digesting dog food and later on digest raw food in preparation for you know sudden change of situation like now all of a sudden everything is closed we cannot buy dog food but we have a whole lot of meat outside great my dog's used to it I prepared him for this or flip that flip that around you only have dog food and then nobody in your area is selling natural food that you can give your dog fine I have a whole lot of dog food my dog do not need to adjust uh, when you're desperate to make him adjust right because he has he's so used to um, going back and forth dog food natural food dog food natural food they don't have to just adjust in a snap and so that's the reason why I still give it. Also, my dogs perform long term in a show or travel with me uh, on a plane. I cannot afford for them to adjust immediately to the food. If I normally in May, once a year, I go to Cebu for a competition and Three months before the competition, I will already transition Kahati, my dog that I compete with in agility. So he doesn't have to make that adjustment right before we travel to Cebu or to wherever. 
I like bringing my own dog food. I like bringing dog food, the dry dog food, because it's consistent and it doesn't spoil. If I keep giving my dogs, um, if I keep giving my dogs natural food, and then I just say, oh, it's a four hour preparation, it's a four hour trip to get to Cebu, then I know it's only an hour, but of course I have to bring them to, you know, this area in the airport where it takes four hours. And it takes another two hours for them to be brought to me uh, when we get to Cebu or to the, the, the destination. Um, if I buy my fresh food there and then they start because of course there's a little bit of stress when you're traveling and their system is not a hundred percent and then I give them something that they're not familiar with then they will literally have shits everywhere upset stomach they're so stressed from the flight they poo they will have LBM I can't afford to have that when we're in a competition or when we are doing a long-term show so uh, that's one of the good reasons why you still want to practice giving your dogs uh, kibble if you're not doing shows you're not competing and you just you know your, your dogs are family members at home pets nothing professional about your relationship then by all means just give them natural food um, natural is always best but again, I don't look down to, to kibble because I've been, I've been using kibble. I'll be a fucking hypocrite if I don't, if I look down to kibble. And the only kibble that I use, and what's the kibble, what's the kibble that I use? I only use two brands, and those are the brands and variant that worked for my dogs. One is the Go Natural Salmon. Because when I try other, uh, Variants, they just start having this itch all over their body in 15 fucking minutes. That terrible. So the Go Natural Salmon, amazing. The Akana Pacifica. Another fish variant. And both those uh, brands and those variants have zero grains in them. It's... I remember Kahati and I struggled when he was around three to four years old because that's when he started having all these itch and me and my vet and I want to give a shout out to Rafi. Hi Doc Rafi. So me and my vet, we go above, he goes above and beyond his um, job and he said like Brad, it might be too much if we keep injecting uh, uh, steroids. And I agree with him. And then I go, okay, doc, what do you suggest? Let's just wait it out. Yes, so we did. We tried so many things. And what worked for me at the time were, again, natural food. Natural food in the form of fish. I cook it. Fish and potatoes. Mix them together, put them in a one huge ass pot, and smash it with, you know, the fish that I use was milk fish, bangus. And when I can't find bangus, I get century tuna. And that worked. But it took us half a year. Why? Because the allergens for, uh, for the allergens to completely leave the body it takes about a month. And if you keep changing your food, they still might be allergic to what they had three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and you might think that the new food right now is not working. So it takes a whole month for you to know whether something, a food, a uh, type of food is working for them or not, if they're allergic to it or not, okay? I always try to have a shirt for my dogs and a cone because I don't want to keep giving them steroids or antihistamine because the long-term effect of that is really not good for your dog. So I, I, 
I just put them in an Elizabethan collar and put a shirt on them so they don't damage their skin when they try to scratch, especially at night. Uh, while we're naturally waiting for all those toxins or allergens to go out of their body. So that's what worked for me. The downside of potato and fish is that it made my dogs, it made Kahati very thin. He still has the same energy. He's very healthy. He wasn't allergic to it, which is amazing. But he was, you know, you have to give a lot for him to bulk up a little. And my dogs are thin because I keep them thin. But for my standards, he was too thin. Even if I was giving him around 500 grams a day, that's half a kilo a day of uh, the potato and fish concoction that make so and then when he was completely allergy free that's when I tried to use this kibble uh, these kibbles so I first tried to use a certain brand and then after 15 minutes he started itching I'm like immediately stop it give him a lot of water and it took like days for that I gave him one meal and I observed him after 15 minutes he started itching Okay, stop that. And then I tried so many other. And then I got to Go Natural. And then I got to uh, Akana Pacifica. So that's how I discovered it. Uh, uh, process of elimination. See, okay. So those are the brands that I use. And why do I want to have two, three brands? One, what if they run out of Go Natural? Then I can't give another. I don't know what other brands he's comfortable with. So I highly recommend that you have at least three brands that you can rotate uh, and a natural food that you know your dogs are not allergic to for practical purposes, practical reasons, especially nowadays. Gosh. Next. Um, how much food do I give? Okay. I do not follow, if I'm giving them dog food, I do not follow the package uh, instructions because it's a little too much and I think, uh, I think that they're asking you to give a lot so they can sell more, so you can buy more because you're gonna run out very soon, right? And if you notice, once you're giving a lot of, uh, if you, once you have um, follow the instructions from the package then your dogs are gonna be so fat and what I personally follow is that I want to see a rib showing in all my dogs I really think that's healthy there's there it, it's it's a lot of trial and error and what works for me for my medium-sized dogs is Three, three of these. Okay. One and one half cup of kibble. This is one half cup. So I only give one. Why I said three of these? Because I give one half cup in the morning. We're gonna train anyway. Okay. So I don't need them to be full whenever we're training. So during the day, we still train before and after. During the meal itself, when I'm giving kibble, I, I use it as training. Uh, every time I feed them, it's a training situation for them. So, And then at night, I give them two of this. Uh, both my medium-sized dogs. I have, uh, Alam is a medium-sized dog, and then Kahati is like borderline medium to large. I still give him the same amount, especially with him because he had a broken hind leg and he can't be heavy. He can't be heavy, he's doing agility, so let's let's keep his weight really, really uh, low. So there's that. With Kaya, I give Kaya is my small dog. Uh, again, I'm this these measurements are for my dogs when I'm giving them kibble. So for Kaya, he has an eighth of a cup in the morning and two of these, one-fourth 
of a cup at night. That's when I'm giving them uh, kibble. And it really is up to your dog's body on how they process the food. Some dogs are just naturally thin, no matter how much dog food you give, or no matter how much food you give, period. And they're just naturally thin. And as they grow older, like us humans, we start, our, our metabolism starts to slow down. Uh, mind you, my dogs walk three hours a day. Three hours a day. And if you're not giving that much physical exercise to your dogs, then you might as well just limit the food that they eat. Otherwise, it will just keep on fucking build up. Just like us humans, we keep eating because we feel hungry, but we don't move enough to burn that calorie. So it's the same with your dogs, okay? Now, how much natural food do you give your dogs? How much um, raw do I give my dogs? I started with 3% of their body weight. I find that 3% of their, again, there's nothing wrong with giving. A lot of people think that mm, it might be too low. 3% of their body weight for the whole day. Not 3% of their body weight per meal. Okay? So 3% of the, their body weight a day. So you're going to give 1.5% of their body weight per meal. If you're giving them uh, two meals a day, then you're going to give 1.5%. Uh, and... I find that my dogs get a little too thick. I don't like it. I really want them to have that one rib showing, especially on their off-season, off-season, when they're not uh, competing in agility, when they're not doing a show, when they're not preparing for a commercial. I, I, I want to maintain that one rib, okay? When I'm preparing for a competition, I want two ribs shown and they're in tip-top shape. And I don't just uh, reduce the amount of food when I want them to. I slowly reduce the amount of food. Now, how do I maintain and how much do I give my dogs uh, when I give them natural food? First, I started with 3% of their body weight a day. And then my dogs started to get a little bit thick or fat. So I reduced that to a very loose, for Alam, one cup a day, very loose, okay? I don't, I don't pat it down and make a pate out of it. I just put it there, make sure that it's loose. There's some air pockets inside and that's what I give my dogs. That's true. Um, I'm gonna read Jen's message later, and it's 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 a worth it's it's worth sharing everyone uh, to everyone that's uh, watching this. And okay, let me get back to that later, Jen. Uh, that's a good point, though. And thank you. So, I three percent body weight doesn't work for me. And what works for me is just alab one cup a day of raw and he's not thin he's very energetic i still maintain that um one one rib showing and amazingly for two of my dogs alab and kahati that works as well so kahati is naturally thicker than alab but he doesn't lose that much weight probably because he's he, he doesn't walk three hours a day. He does a lot of agility, so that's more power than endurance. That's why he has, he's more muscular than Alab. Alab walks a lot, and even if it's, he's very slow when he walks, that's still three hours. <laughs> Not a lot of us humans walk really slow for three hours. It takes a whole lot of endurance for us to do that. So, um, I... No problem with me. Now, the trial and error, again, that I had to do was with Kaya. And 
I still give three of this in a day. It's the same amount of dog food that I give, and it's the same amount, but it's loosely packed. It's not super packed, it, you know. Uh, it's it's something it, probably because he is a small dog, and he keeps moving around even in a very tight space. He just doesn't stop, so he consumes a lot of energy. So, and remember raw food or natural food doesn't have that much additives or it has zero additives so it's not just something that is filling to your dog i mean the fillers alone is calorie they don't need and when i'm giving raw when i'm transitioning to raw every quarter then i have to give the same amount to him because he has more activity passive activities because he just moves around especially when I'm not in a room so when I'm working he's a little bit um, anxious and he just walks around and waits for me and even in a, in a sm small office he tends to lose more use more calorie than Alab and Kahapi who are just so used to waiting for me nicely and they just sleep okay now let me go back to what Jen said here. He, she said, 3% um, of their ideal weight computation doesn't work if they are already overweight. Haha. <laughs> Both India and Ryder are only eating 2% because they get too chunky otherwise. Yes, thank you for saying that. Um, the ideal body weight, even for us human, I don't believe in ideal body weight. Okay, Brad is... 5 feet 9 inches, his ideal weight should be 150. Let's just say it's 150. I don't follow that crap. I'm 135. If I go beyond 140, my back hurts. So 150 for my height is not my ideal weight personal ideal weight for me is 135 okay so there's a whole lot of factors for it to be ideal specifically to your body specifically to your dog's body so thank you jen for raising that uh, it's not even a question it's it's a comment uh third three percent of the ideal body weight i don't even use the ideal body i don't believe in ideal body weight because i think it's <laughs> You will know your dog's ideal body weight the same way you know your ideal body weight. Some people are just naturally born thicker than others. I was naturally born to be a lot thinner than others. And because I have this injury, my ideal body weight cannot be 150 for my height. I have to be way less than that. 140 and I can already feel the pressure on my lower back. So if I follow my ideal body weight then i am not healthy same thing with your dog so thank you jen yes if you follow your dog's ideal body weight um then they process food in different and they have though they, they don't have the same uh uh they don't have the same amount of work that they do during the day or they don't have the same uh metabolism then you're not giving them uh they're not healthy uh that's what i mean okay jen that's not that's what i meant personal ideal for the dog like india should be nine kilograms she's now more than 10 kilograms i still compute two percent of her nine kilogram weight instead of the 10k correct so there's gonna be a lot of trial and error on our part even with dog food, I do not believe in a one-size-fits-all instruction. So especially your dog food says, you have to give a cup of dog food in the morning or a cup. Don't follow that. Um, our bodies and your dog's bodies will never be the same. I just got lucky that two of my dogs, two out of three of my dogs, uh, share the same way of processing food. Uh, 
I think age activity level, pregnancy, and lactating bitches are also factors. Yes, I've discussed age. Uh, the older they get, the slower the metabolism. And of course, the activity, passive or active. I do a lot of active activity walking my dogs. Kahati does agility. Those are two different things. Agility is more speed than endurance. And walking the dogs, doing sniff shopping is something that is more to the endurance side. And Kaya, my small dog, is passively just walking around, especially when he's waiting for me. So that's that's something that you need to factor in. So thank you so much, Deckel Legacy Windsor. That's uh, my friend from New York for sharing that. And what else? Okay, I I need to go through all my questions. Yes, allergy toppers, rotating. Okay, treats, food treats. Hello. <laughs> um, uh, food treats is also something that you need to factor in. I only give two of these. When I'm giving natural food, I only give two of these to Alab because I give... I give 20 to 30 pieces of diced raw meat to Alab. And that's a lot. So I need to factor that in. Otherwise... If I still keep giving him three of these, and then that's almost half a cup, a few pieces of something this big, 20 pieces, that's a lot of treats. But they're natural. So you also have to factor that in. Otherwise, if you just keep on giving, 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 and then not reduce the amount of food, the meals that you give them, then it's going to pile up and then they get fat. Long-term effect of being overweight is not good. We know that. So... I'm very passionate about this because it's, it may not be on the training and psychology and all that, you know, um, things that I teach, but I, as, as an individual myself, I'm very conscious of health because, especially now, how can you not be not conscious of your physical health? So before I start fucking ranting, let's go back to the dogs. So especially with your dogs, trash in, trash out. A little too much of everything is bad, whether it's kibble or natural food, cooked, raw. Everything, um, everything that's given too much is bad. Water is bad if it's a little too much. And we will get to water later on. Uh, so, allergies, I've discussed that. <sighs> my recipe. So here's my recipe. I try to follow... When I'm giving raw, I try to follow, there are two schools of thoughts when you're giving raw. One is the prey model, uh, which you're practically giving the whole carcass, including the internal organs, to your dogs. I can't take it. I cannot, one, I cannot keep whole carcasses in my ref for my dogs, including the internal organs. It's for, it grosses me out. Uh, if I had a different freezer or storage, then I'll do it and I'll have someone just give it to my dogs. I'll do it. Why? I highly believe that it's healthy. The bone, the internal organs, the brain, the eyes, everything. Else. I really believe that it's healthy because given the chance, they're gonna hunt for those anyway, the live ones. It's a bonus that they're already dead and dressed, especially if we're talking about birds or chickens or, or, or rabbits, okay? It's healthy. I just can't take it, okay? It's me, not the dog. <laughs> raw though, raw, the 80-10-10 uh, is what I try to follow, but I don't follow it on the dot. Because, why? I try to follow. It's a good guide. So let me try to explain the best way I can the 80-10-10 diet and that 80% muscle meat of your choice or the choice of your dog if they have some allergies toward you know, some animal, then delete that. Choose another animal. So for my dogs, it's 80% ground beef. The 10-10, however, should not be 10-10. It's 10-5-5. 
So the 10% will be internal organs. I give uh, liver. And the 5% would be calcium source. Could be bone. Could be what I use is eggshells. Um, and then there's the 5% um, veggies. Fruits or plants or uh, veggies, uh, fruits or green leafy, which I don't do. Okay, and here's a very unpopular thing that I let me give you my recipe. My recipe is a, is a, a kilo again, immediately that's a hundred percent muscle meat, a kilo, one fourth kilo of liver or any internal organs that I can get. Uh, muscle uh, heart is not an internal organ considered it's not a, it, it's not considered an internal organ it's a muscle so um, you want beef you want innards you want uh, tripe and if you can get the green tripe that's better because you want the organisms in it and you want the um, uh, the bacteria the good bacteria for them to eat and what I get from the butcher, the meat shop, is already the bleach, the white kind, the one that smells clean. It's not as healthy as the green one, but again, the green one is really hard to find because they don't sell those in grocery or meat shops because it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> it holds poop, and that's where all the digestion happens, and they don't sell it. Um... Hi, Tatay Ryan. Thanks for tuning in. So, um, okay. So, I give a kilo. So, I try to mix a kilo. This is my ratio. A kilo of dog food. A, a kilo of uh, ground beef. One-fourth kilo of liver. And five eggshells. That's what I... I don't give them... Uh... I don't give them veggies. They hate it. Even if I mince it, this is what I think I want to do in the future. I'm going to get those really small blenders and blend the, the veggies and then mix them into the beef. So it's, they're not going to they're not going to try to pick it out. They're just going to eat the whole thing. This is a very unpopular thing to add in your dog's diet. Raw garlic. Yes, I have been giving my dogs raw garlic. And I'm not going to give you the science to it. I'm not going to give you the study. There, there, there's so many studies that us, that's already available in the internet. And again, personal experience, for 11 years, Alab has been consuming raw garlic. My previous dogs have been consuming raw garlic from the food scraps that we eat. It has not affected them. They lived for a very long time, 13, 15 years. It's not bad for a medium-sized rescue street dogs, right? So this is what I do. For my small dog, Kaya, one-fourth of a uh, clove. So one-fourth of a clove, and I give it once a day. For a whole week and then make them rest for a week and then you know just give every other week i give them raw for alab i give the rest i give um uh, uh three fourths i just mash it and i pound it and then just put it between the food and then they accidentally eat it no problem so I do it for about seven days and then seven days rest. And why am I doing this? One, it was taught to me by one of uh, the most popular vets here in the Philippines, Marga. I forgot her last name. She's from Vet Vets in Practice. A long time ago. Wow, this is back in 2009. The first and the last time that I met her. And uh, she told me that if I was going to give uh, home-cooked or raw, make sure that I give my dogs uh, garlic. The fresher it is, the better. And you can read a whole lot about it uh, and watch it on YouTube. Uh, my go-to person for this, I don't know her personally, but uh, my go-to people for nutrition on YouTube and on, uh, uh, inter on the internet is uh, 
his last name is Habib. Uh, and then one that he works with is Dr. Karen Becker. And I have been watching her videos since 2009, 10. So go back to this video and just Google them. They're very good when it comes to holistic approach in raising your dog. So yeah, I gave a kilo of ground beef, one fourth kilo uh, of liver, eggshells, five whole eggshells crushed, and I put it in the microwave just to cook it a little because I'm so afraid that they might they might be allergic to it because they've been so allergic to anything poultry. And that is poultry, even the eggshells of poultry. Why am I giving them uh, eggshells? It, it's, it's a good source of calcium and it makes their poop a little bit harder. So if I just give them the, the meat, then every time they poop, it's not unhealthy, but if every time I give them uh, just that, it, their poop is a lot softer it's not LBM, but it's just a lot softer. So the eggshells help them uh, with the source of calcium and it makes their poop a little bit more solid. So when I pick it up, it's a lot easier for me. Uh, so it's a win-win situation. Why can't I just give my dogs raw bone? I did and I have been except for Alab because Alab is so old that he's been chewing uh, raw bone for since he was very little that he just like us humans, we have the favored part of our body. So he just kept on chewing, chewing uh, one part of his mouth. So he has lost uh, a tooth or two in that part of his mouth. So now I can't, I can't afford to make him lose more teeth. So I just brush his teeth. I can discuss that again later. I didn't used to believe in brushing the dog's teeth until I had to because I can't, I can't clean their teeth naturally anymore using raw bone. So now I'm giving eggshells to replace uh, the calcium need and I'm just brushing his teeth with plain water or VCO. That leads me into saying that you can also add some VCO every time, virgin coconut oil, every time you feed your dog. So I do that in the morning and then at night I give uh, apple cider vinegar. I just give, you can never argue with how healthy VCO and um, apple cider vinegar is and I take it myself as well. In fact, I just put some VCO. Can you see the oils? I just put some VCO on my mouth and I have two minutes remaining. So again, when I'm giving raw, I give for Alab and Kahati, I give one of this in the morning and this is one half cup and then at night I give two of these which makes it a cup. And the reason why I give less in the morning is because I still train them using, again, natural food. Um, and then, as well as Kaya, I give three of this a day, one in the morning, two at night, and I train them during the day. Luckily, here in the Philippines at least, we have um, companies that sell natural food. One is, uh, my really favorite uh, brand, it's uh, barf they sell dog treats that are uh, dehydrated and they're very healthy for your dogs and I think they're also uh, they're also they also sell raw food okay so barf ph or barf dot ph they're on Instagram another one is perfect plates they're on Instagram as well and um, owned by my really good friend she dehydrates dog. Uh, I'm behind not... you. Potty the dog. Okay, I'm gonna potty them now. It's their schedule. 30 seconds remaining. Last but not the least, my friend, mm -hmm. Ate Sibel, my sister, she also I'm has a company you. that's a. Uh, potty the dog. Okay, Alexa, I have 20 minutes. Shut up. So, 20 seconds. So, it's. um. She's on my Instagram. Uh, and they sell home cooked dog food and she personalizes it for you and i'm seven seconds i forgot the company name just go to her her name's sibel manlapas on instagram 
Bye.